What's up guys, Luis here from Alibi Security and in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up our brand new Vigilant NDAA compliant license plate recognition camera. The whole purpose of this video is to show you how to set this camera up and also how to review and download the license plate video clips and images from the recorder. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified when new videos are available. Okay, before we get into all the details of setting this camera up, I did want to mention that I would highly recommend to look at the installation guide for this camera. This guide will give you a lot of information on how to do a site survey so you can know that the scenario that your customer is looking for is actually going to work for this camera. It also has a lot of uh, information on angles and distances. Uh, it's a two page document that really will give you a lot of information on how to properly mount this camera, how to set the focal length and the angles and some distances of lanes, etc. So if you wanted to take a look at this document, I will link it also in the description below. So make sure to check that out. So let's get started on adding this camera to the NVR. So obviously um, adding the camera to the NVR is going to be a pretty basic process. It's just like adding any other camera. But after the fact, we're going to have to set up a server in order for it to communicate that license plate recognition information from the camera to the server. So as you can see here on my computer, I do have the Alibi Vigilant Toolbox pulled up. And what we have here, as you can see, is the ALI XB20, the ANPR, that is the license plate camera. And down here I have a test unit, the NVR or the NR321P-8. That is the unit that we're gonna be connecting that to. So um, what we need to do initially is just uh, go ahead and log into this camera. So we'll do the 192.168.1.114. And notice that I am in Internet Explorer mode. So the plugin will work. So we'll go to go ahead and log in there. And the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. It is going to prompt me to create a new password. This is pretty normal for vigilant cameras. So I'll type in the old password. And I'll type in the new password. And I'll confirm that new password. It's also going to ask you to put an email there if you want it for password reset purposes. I'm not going to do that for this test, but I would recommend doing that. Okay, it's going to prompt me to re-log into the camera. And I'll go to admin and I'll type my new password. And as you can see here, the camera is on. We'll make some adjustments after the fact, but this is going to be the live view interface from the web browser of this camera. So right now, we, what we wanna do is go to setup. And the first thing we wanna to do to the camera is actually put it on a static address. Obviously, we all know that a static address is gonna help if there is any power cycles or outages with your router. If this camera reboots, the last thing we want it uh, is to get a different address, it's the recorder as well and then it, it not to uh, communicate properly. So I'm gonna go to network here and set this to static and I'm gonna keep the same information so I hit save here. On the recorder as well, you wanna make sure that that is set to static also. So if I go to here to network, it is set to static already. Just turn the DHCP off and then save those settings. So that way, the LP camera and the unit, they communicate via IP address to each other. So we wanna make sure those addresses stay the same the whole time. So once the camera and the unit are both on static addresses, the next thing we wanna do is add the camera to the unit. So we're gonna go to camera. So once you're in the camera, once you're in the camera menu, all we need to do is add the camera. So if I pull up my tool here, my camera is on 192.168.1.114. So I'll hit the add option here. I'll type the address of the camera, username, and type the current password of the camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. And we'll give that a second to refresh itself. I'm just gonna mash this refresh button until it shows up. All right, so now that you can see it does have a green status, which means the camera is online. If I go to the live view option here and hit the 
um, start live view, it does show the camera there. So once the camera is online, we can go ahead and get started with setting up the photo server between the LP camera and the unit. So keep in mind that there is going to be a device ID. Let me pull up the manual real quick. As you can see here on the instruction manual for the camera, under step two here it does say device ID is a 20 digit number unique on the LAN and the digits 11 through 13 must be 119. Don't get this, don't make this too confusing for yourself. This is actually pretty simple. And as you can see here down on device ID, it does have 10 zeros, 119, six zeros and the number one. I'm gonna make it really simple for you. And I'm going to actually put that device ID in the description below on this video. All you have to do is copy it and paste it into a notepad just like I did here. And what I'm gonna do is copy that device ID. And now when I set up the server on the unit first, uh, in my testing, I found out it was a lot simpler to add the server first on the unit. So we'll go to platform on the left. Across the top, we're gonna to go to configure VIID local. And this is very important here, right? Where you add the server to, you wanna make sure that that coincides with the channel that the camera is actually on. Let's go to the camera menu here. Right now, my license plate camera is on channel D1, right? So when I'm doing the platform, the VIID local, I wanna make sure that I enter that server information on D1. If the camera is on D6, you wanna make sure to enter that information on D6. All I need to do is paste that 20 character ID into channel one because that's where my camera is added to. And I'm gonna hit the save option. You're not gonna see an online status just yet because we need to set up the camera. So now I'm gonna go over to the camera and I am gonna go to the system and then photo server here, I already have it selected. The only thing you need to do here is type the IP address of the NVR. So we'll check that out as 192.168.1.247. So we'll type that here. And the device ID, we'll just go ahead and paste that in there as well. And the username and platform access code, that is gonna be the username and password to the NVR. The rest of this information here, we're just gonna leave that alone. All we need to do is hit save here. So before you hit save, you wanna notice that this photo server down here does have a green light. What we wanna see is it go offline and then come back online. So we'll hit save and see how it turned red and then back green. That does give us the indication that it did reach out to the recorder and it did connect to the server on the recorder. So now if we go back to the recorder, let's refresh this page. And as you can see here under D1 for the VIID local, it does have an online status. That's all we need to see right there. The camera is communicating with the unit and it will be sending that license plate information over to the unit and storing it on the hard drive where you can find it. Um, the last thing we wanna do here obviously is go to the live view. And obviously you can see here that this is a pretty wide shot. I like to have, I'm a huge advocate of having these cameras zoomed in pretty far. A nice good kind of cropped in where the cars will be driving in and out. And then also having a separate camera that does have like a wide field of view for that area. So once you got this zoomed in all the way to where you would like it, I would recommend going to the setup wizard. And uh, if you need to adjust this box to where you would like it to be kind of right in the area where the plate is gonna be, you can hit save there. And also if you wanna enable the horizontal reference line for the most optimal spot to catch that license plate, you can turn that on as well. At this point, this is pretty much set it and forget it. So when a car drives in here, it will display the actual plate number here on top. And I can probably pull up a screenshot of that right now. And then below that, you'll have a zoomed in image of the plate. And then below that, you'll see the actual um, picture of the vehicle that's driving in. Down in this bottom section here, you, while you're in the live view of the camera, on the web page of the camera, you will see a list of records here. So 
Keep in mind that if you do switch screens and come back, all that information here will reset itself. So the last thing I wanna show you on the camera itself during this setup is the SD card function. By default, the SD card is gonna be doing an a and uh, option, which is automatic network replenishment. So only if it loses connection to the recorder will it start backing up to the SD card. And then once the recorder reconnects, it will push that information to the recorder. So if you wanna change that and make sure that it backs up everything, all the images to the SD card 24 seven, you wanna make sure to go to the storage option and then where the memory card is, format it if you need to. And at the bottom here, and where it says image storage mode, you wanna select real time store and hit save. And what that'll do is actually, like I said earlier, it would actually save every photo to the SD card. So now that we have the camera set up, I wanna show you how you can review and download the footage from the recorder itself. There's also a special feature on the live view that you can enable to kind of give you a preview um, thumbnails on the right hand side of the live view. So looking at the recorder itself, as you can see here, I do have the camera on the left hand side. This is in a two by two grid. This is a 32 channel recorder. Typically, if this is the only camera on this unit, I just wanna make sure to just add this to a single view. So I'm gonna click here, go to single window, choose IP camera. And if you right click on the screen here and go to preview mode, you'll notice that I have it in smart. So it is in normal by default. So if you do wanna see this, these thumbnail previews on the right hand side, you can change it to smart and it will bring this information up on the right hand side and in real time pop up on the, in a thumbnail there where you can view that footage. So let's see here down on the bottom, if I click on this, it's gonna want me to log in real quick. It will bring up the clip and the information about that license plate. So it does have the camera, the time, the license plate um, number, does have the vehicle color and the blue tag there is supposed to be for the license plate color. That is still kind of in process. So there's some firmware that will probably come out that will either correct that or remove that. So right now we're just really focused on the camera, the time and the license plate information. So that's a really cool feature here. If you are like in a security room or like a security shack, uh, somebody watching this 24 seven, um, this is a cool little thumbnail preview of the smart features that if you click on that, it will bring those clips up uh, and you can even pause it if you would like. And let's say you wanted to download that specific clip this is super easy from the recorder. Make sure you put a USB key into the um, into the recorder there so you can back it up to that USB key. We'll just go to right click and go to VCA search. And we'll go to vehicle search here. If you really wanted to get into specifics, obviously you can do a specific date and time. Plate number, if you had a specific plate number you were looking for, you could type that there. I'm just gonna leave these all default. I'm gonna hit search. And it's gonna bring up all the clips from the search results, which was like a 24 hour period. If I click on that one, there is the uh, orange truck or red truck. And once it's selected there, all I need to do is hit the backup option. And I'm gonna go to the LP cam folder. And I have done some tests here, you can see. So I'm just gonna hit backup. And what that'll do is back up the image and the video clip to that thumb drive. And at that point, you can email it, you can share it or hand it off to authorities or whatever you need to do. You wanna make sure that the backup image and the backup recording checkboxes are checked. That will make sure that you get actual still shot of the, the vehicle and also the video clip. So super easy process here to back that footage up. And if you really wanted the whole clip, you can always go to playback and download the specific time frame for that vehicle. Moving on to the web browser, I'm gonna log into the NVR and show you the options you have from the web login of the NVR. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Obviously you're gonna have live view of the camera if you would like. Under smart is where we're gonna get most of our features for the license plate camera. And in here, we're gonna kinda of go to the same option, VCA search and vehicle search across the top. We're gonna have those same options here. I'm gonna uncheck all. I'm just gonna check camera one there. Kind of the same thing what you saw on the local interface of the unit. You do have the plate color, vehicle color, and the plate number if you would like to search a specific plate number. I'm um, gonna leave all those blank. I'm just gonna hit search. 
The difference is here, this is only a preview or a, you can only review this information here and export it into a spreadsheet. So if you hit export, if you select this and hit export, it will export into a CSV file, which is a spreadsheet file that just has data. Uh, there is no pictures and or video clips in there. So overall right now, reviewing the uh, VCA or the license plate information through the web browser is just kind of a preview um, if you're really looking to get that specific clip, you're going to need to go to the recorder and download that from the recorder itself with the thumb drive. If you have an SD card in the camera, you can retrieve that image from the SD card of the camera. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let me log into the camera. Keep in mind that this is Microsoft Edge and I am in Internet Explorer mode. So the plugin will work properly. Go ahead and log into the camera here. And if you do have an SD card installed, you want to go to the photo option here and it will have a file system tree here. And if I click on today's date here and just choose, I think it was a red car. And there you can see the images. There is no video clips in this area here. It only is backing up the images of the vehicle. So at that point, you can select this image here, hit the export option, and it will save it directly to your computer. Overall, I feel like when you when it comes down to like exporting and saving this information, doing it from the recorder itself seems to be a lot more efficient because it will also download the clip and the picture uh, for you in one shot. So. If your only option is to download from the camera, then you do have this option here to download. If you, if you have an SD card in the camera, you can download it from here. Overall, I hope this video helps you set up your own license plate camera. If you do have any questions or issues, please feel free to reach out to our tech support team for help. Also, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified when new videos are available.